This is G. Kiran Kumar, Assistant Professor from EC Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So today we are going to discussing about Digital Communication Laboratory in that the important real-time application oriented experiment that is Pulse Position Modulation. Let us see the Pulse Position Modulation, how to change the position of the pulse by using the pulses. So based upon the input signal, that is message signal, the width of the pulse can be varied, sorry, the position of the pulse can be varied. So now let us see the pulse position modulation key. In that we have internal audio frequency generator. This is the message signal generator and this is the clock generator. And by using these two internal AF signal generator and clock generator, we can perform the pulse position modulation here. Okay, just you can see the connection. The AF signal is given to the input of the pulse modulator circuit and clock also can be given to the input of the pulse modulator circuit. So after giving these two inputs, we will get the pulse position modulation output. Now let us see one by one. Here you can verify the output of the AF signal generator, whether it may be worked properly or not. Okay. Right? See here, the, so this is the output of the audio frequency generator that is the input signal. This is our input signal. And let us see the clock frequency also. This is the clock frequency. So by applying these two AF signals and clock signal to the PWM circuit, you will get the PPM output. See here, I am just giving two connections that is AF output is given to the input of the PPM modulator and clock also can be given to the input of the PPM modulator. Now let us see the outputs. See this is the PPM modulation key. Here you can measure the output of the PPM. So see the screen. Here you will get the different types of pulses with different different variated positions. Okay. You have to cross verify these positions with the audio frequency signal. Then only you will get the clarification about the pulse position modulation. So for that purpose, I am going to consider the channel 2 for verification purpose. I am giving message signal to the channel 2 again. Right. Here you can see two different signals that is the input signal and based upon the message signal frequency the output positions of the pulses can be valid. See here this is the maximum frequency of the input signal and this is the minimum frequency of the input signal. So if I am changing the message signal frequency values, message signal frequency levels that is if I am changing the amplitude of the message signal the position of the pulses can also be varied. See here. So here low amplitude it gives one position, position here and for the high value of the message signal input here the position can be varied. See based upon the input signal the positions may be varied that is the starting position of the signal may be trailing edge or leading edge or center of the pulse. Here you can see the dotted lines here. So here the pulse position is center that is either side or either sides you can identify here either sides the position can be started and coming to this pulse trailing edge can also be the started point of this pulse and here you can identify that that is the position of the pulse is leading edge. So like this we have to calculate the positions. So what will happen if I am changing this knob from the input side? This is the amplitude variated knob for the 
audio frequency signal that is messy signal so if i am changing the poi amplitude value the positions of the pulse also can be varied now let us see if i am giving zero amplitude all the positions are equal if i am changing or if i am increasing the amplitude so the positions of the pulse also can be varied see the variations here see the variations here so different different types of positions can also be started okay with different position here you have to note down one thing the amplitude and width is constant in pulse position modulation whereas in pwm width is varied amplitude and position can be constant okay so this is about the pulse position modulation if i am changing or if i am increasing the amplitude values the positions also can be varied so as usually we can note down the values of the amplitude and frequency or in terms of time period we have to note down the values okay for the message signal you have to note down the amplitude level and frequency for the pulse position modulated signal we have to calculate the values of amplitude and frequency so this is the pulse position modulation so after modulation we will go for the demodulation here you can see the demodulator kit here it indicates ppm input that is from the ppm circuit output okay by using only one connection that is ppm output directly given to the ppm input then you will get the output of the ppm demodulator so here i am just connecting ppm input to the ppm demodulator and i am checking the output so this is the demodulated output with little bit distortion that is based upon the message signal frequency if the amplitude level is greater than the uh, clock frequency you will get the distortion so that's why we have to change the values randomly that is which is suitable for the modulation okay so this is the demodulated signal which is approximately equal to the input frequency signal okay so the demodulation process is ends here right so this is about the pulse position modulation so with respect to the pulses the position of the pulse can be changes remaining amplitude and width of the pulse can be constant thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates